Goober Gang, welcome back. We are gonna go for an outdoor adventure tonight. We have to go to Kerr Lake tonight. There's a reason. I'm not gonna tell you just yet. You're gonna have to watch this video to figure out why, but as you can see, we got the boat back there behind us and we got a truck full of camping and filming supplies. What you can expect to see in today's video is a little bit of camping, a little bit of cooking, of course, some fishing. And if that's the kind of adventure that you like to see, make sure you throw us a thumbs up. We've got almost a hundred miles left to go down the road. And as you can see, it is still hot out. It was up over 100 degrees today, so we waited for the temperature to cool down a little bit. I didn't want to bake outside all day, so we're gonna hit the water around 7.30 p.m., fish in the heat for a couple hours, maybe take a dip in the lake. We're gonna try and catch our dinner. If not, we got some backup supplies here. And there's one thing that's for certain. The low temperature is only 84 degrees tonight. It's gonna to be a pretty uncomfortable night of sleep. I'll catch you when we find a bait shop. Later. So there we go, Bugs Island bait and tackle. Picked up 24 big reds. We're gonna put those worms to use trying to catch some white perch and any other bait fish we can luck into. Maybe some bluegill, things like that. So time to hit the lake, let's get it. Time to get out of here. Alrighty, we'll see you in the morning here, trailer. Luckily on the drive, the temperature's cooled off a whole bunch. All right, this is our last trip on this boat for a couple weeks, so we better make it a good one. Make sure you watch all the way through the video to find out why that is, but she will not be leaving this part of the state for three weeks after this trip. Let's give her a little push and we are off. Fire up the Garmin, get the Simrad going. Holy cow, these bank fishermen over here are serious. They've got this whole peninsula lined with rods. I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There's probably a good 20 rods out there. That's wild. All right, so first line of business. It is crazy hot out here. I'm going to go for a Wegman sparkling water. I'm going to throw it in my little koozie thing here. Courtney made me a little graphic for it. Fitting. And toss it in there, I'll keep it nice and cold while we start looking for some white perch. I pulled out the sabiki rod right here. This thing's pretty cool because the entire rig goes down into the tube. Right there, that probably gives you a better look at it. Whole rig sucks into there so you don't have six hooks everywhere. Then it all just comes right out the end. And you got all your hooks going down. I want to tip that with some worms and I'm also going to take my precision cast rod from Catch the Fever. I got a little crappy jig on there. So we'll toss that down with a, and tip it with some worms as well. As you can see, we got a pretty loaded down cooler here. We got a couple cool things in mind for this trip. And uh, we're gonna try and catch our dinner above all else. If that fails, we got a backup plan. And this little sabiki rig here, I'm just gonna tip each of the little gold hooks with a little bit of worm. That should do the trick. Now that's all tipped with worms, we'll just drop that over the side. Got that on a little bait casting reel here and we'll be good to go. Last little bit of worm's gonna go on our precision cast crappy rod from Catch the Fever. There we go, we'll start jigging that. All right, Goober Gang, so we couldn't really find any white perch out in the main lake. We did find these lights they turned on when it got dark and the darkness set in fast. But what we've been doing here is throwing the cast net. Let me show you some of the bait we got. Tons of gizzard shad, some white perch, plenty of bait to fish for the night. We should be able to cook some of those up if we get hungry here. At least some of the white perch. I'm not going to go eating any shad. Don't get any crazy ideas. But we'll cook up some white perch if we uh, get around to it. We need to run back up river and find a spot to catfish a little bit. Now when I was throwing the cast net, we were catching a bunch of big crappie, but you're not allowed to keep those out of the cast net. So we're going to spend a little bit of time jigging here. It's about 25 feet deep. We're going to toss a couple jigs down there jig them around for a little bit see if we can't hook into any of those crappy because that would be tasty all right goober gang well about 20 to 30 minutes of that no crappy to speak of i think it's time we move on to some catfish 
It's almost 11 o'clock at night. We got plenty of catfish bait, so we're gonna run back up river a couple miles, find a couple spots to anchor up and see if we can catch some. We got some white perch and gizzard shad ready to go. Got all the rods spread out. We're gonna be tossing six rods out there tonight. So we're fishing up against this bluff here and back this way, the main river channel comes in here and then it's kind of a pinch point where it all comes together so I can fish a little bit deeper and a little bit shallower up along this rock wall. So we'll see what happens. We'll anchor up here for the night. Let's get these rods out. Okay, this right here is gonna be a white perch headpiece. Chopped off the body, got a nice little fillet looking thing there. Try and put it right up against the wall out there. That one's basically on shore. We got a double hook Kentucky rig going out. We'll put that about 10 feet offshore. That rig's a little awkward to cast there. Now this right here is a stealth striper rod from Catch the Fever. I wrapped it in some really reflective green tape here and it glows like crazy. That's on about 20 pound braid. So if we hook something on there, it'll be interesting. And there are some monsters in this lake guys. Here we got another chunk of white perch going out. Same thing, striper stealth rod. And now the other couple we're going to cast out as far to the left as we can. Try and get them out towards that old river channel. And we should be able to absolutely zing out Pinky here, the Hellcat. It's got no level wind on there, so she's going to fly. We got that sucker way out there. So that's what the rod setup looks like, and now we wait. So I am thinking it's about time to get cooking here. It's been hours since I last ate. I don't even remember how long ago it was. We're gonna do some better cheddars. If you've never been on the water and had some better cheddars, you do not know what you're missing out on. So we gotta get this pan fired up here. Got our little Everest 2X grill here. Propane. Alrighty. So we got that little pan starting to heat up a little bit. We're gonna throw some of these better cheddars in there. Probably cook. Let's see, there's six of them. Hey, I'm gonna cook three. Why not live a little bit, you know? While I wait for those to cook, I'm gonna have one of my favorite little snacks here Senor Rico's rice pudding. Don't forget, we still got all those rods out here hanging out. We got another group way back on the bank. They're having a fire, so they're back there chilling. Oh yeah, this rice pudding is one of my favorites. I went years without eating rice pudding, then all of a sudden I'm just on this major kick. Best snack ever. We're gonna dig around in our little camping bin here, looking for some silverware. I know we got some in here somewhere. Propane's got those sausages already starting to steam a little bit. They're definitely thawed. They've been hanging out in the cooler for a couple hours. We'll just heat those up, get them, uh, try and cook them as slow as we possibly can there, and we'll be good to go. I can't wait. And right on cue, as soon as I get that grill fired up, we got a rod going down here. This fish hit it and he's swimming way off to the side here. He's gonna run with it. That's how it always goes. As soon as you get down and start getting ready to cook, something else has to jump in. I've been sitting here for 30 minutes, no bites. Now nah, here they are. Yep. Decent sized little blue cat there. He's a little bit bigger than one I'd want to eat, so we're probably not gonna put him in the live well. Look at that. He was going after the shad headpiece there. And that circle hook got him right in the corner of the mouth. It actually got him in the underbelly too. You can see all this loose skin on him. This is a really skinny fish. Normally he'd be quite a bit bigger. So I'd assume he's coming off the beds. He doesn't have too many beat up marks on him, but we're gonna go ahead and get him out of here. Just got done spawning not too long ago. So let's get him out of here. Thanks for playing, buddy. All right, he's out of here. Now that fish is messing up my whole plan here. I was just looking for my spoon, found it. I was gonna sit back and relax and eat my rice pudding while these sausages cooked. Now they're almost done. Ooh, that rice pudding is yummy. Good snack on the boat. All right, rice pudding is done. Those sausages are looking good. If only you could smell those through the camera, man. I'm gonna start getting some plates ready for those pretty soon. I'm gonna let them plump up a little bit more first. All right, these are starting to burst a little bit. I think it's about time we pull them off the grill. I'm 
gonna let some of that gunk burn off the pan a little bit because I'm gonna have to use that in the morning as well and maybe a little bit later tonight if I get hungry in the middle of the night. So these cheddar betters are actually filled with cheese and they are absolutely delicious. So cleanup is done, just kind of scrape that pan a little bit and dump it over the edge of the boat. <laughs> Doesn't get any easier than that. Time to chow down. So we're gonna use the fork side of this fork and our neck knife so we don't absolutely make a mess out of this here. Look at that, we got some cheese in there and the sausage is gonna be good. Oh yeah, oh, that's some good stuff. Three of them might have been a little bit on the aggressive side, but whatever. We're out here living on the lake. I think I enjoyed it, what do you think? So by now it's about 12.15. We're gonna start packing up from dinner a little bit. Keep an eye on the rods. We'll probably put some bells on the rods. Got this huge pack of bells I can snap on there so I can kick back, set up my sleeping area, and then if I hear some jingling, I'll know there's a fish on. Sounds like a good plan to me. You know, I was pretty worried about the overnight temperatures being so high, but it is just gorgeous out here tonight. There's just a slight breeze that's helping keep the bugs away. If that dies off, I brought a little fan with me I can turn on to kind of keep some air moving through here and hopefully keep the bugs from bothering me too much. But beyond that, it's just a gorgeous night. You can hear all the crickets and everything in the background. Not bad, not bad. Good little adventure we have going so far. Let's get this cleaned up and then we'll, uh, we'll show you the sleeping quarters. And one of the things I absolutely love about this boat is how much room it's got. There's tons of room right here. That's actually where I'm gonna set up my sleeping quarters tonight. It doesn't have a traditional live well or anything in the back like that. The live well is actually up front right up there. So one of the cool things is you can walk right back up to the back of the boat, almost all the way up to the transom and get right to everything, right to the rod rack, and it just maximizes the floor space in this boat. I absolutely love it. But let's get that sleeping pad down, we'll get a little blanket down, and it's time to get to sleep. The floor is a little bit nasty from catching bait and everything, so I'm gonna plop a towel down on the ground. We've got a really nice sleeping pad, I don't wanna get that all nasty. Here's our sleeping pad. I've laid down on it, and it's super comfortable. This will actually be the first night that I'm sleeping on it. This is the Thermarest Trail Pro. I'll put a link down to it in the description, but this thing is a, a self-inflating foam mattress. So you pull it out of the box here and it's about, I think it said three and a half inch foam. Uh, three inches. Yep, packs down really light and small and it's got a pretty high insulation value. So we're gonna lay this down on top of our blanket here and there's actually a little valve right up in here. It's actually starting to self-inflate right now and if it's not getting to the level I want to, I can always blow some air into it. So we're just going to let it do its thing for a couple minutes here and start to self-inflate. This reminds me of all those tests I used to have to take when I was a kid with asthma. Not bringing back very fond memories for me here. And now we'll lock down that valve and that should hold all night long. All right, the last pieces we need are a sleeping bag and a pillow. So here's our cheapo sleeping bag right here. This is like a three season bag or something. So it's good for everything but the winter. I'm hoping I can mostly get away with this one because it was like 20 bucks. I don't really care if it gets a little nasty. All right, so there we go, sleeping bags out. And these little pillows are awesome. And the nice thing about these is they stuff up really nice. They're made by a company called Wise Owl Outfitters. They've got a lot of cool stuff. So definitely check them out on the Amazon. Well, there we go. We got our sleeping quarters set up right in the middle of the boat. I might at some point remove that seat on trips like this so I've got a little bit more room to spread out and maybe turn this sideways. That way I'll have a, even more room back here, but we've still got a couple feet to work with back here. We can get back to all the rods. We are good to go. Here's those little bells I was talking about. They just clip right onto your rod and then if there's movement you'll hear them shake like that so here's pinky we're going to take a set of bells and just clip it right to her and put it back on the rod rack and we'll do the same for our other five rods all right all of our bite detectors are on i'm going to lay down for a little bit and see if i can get some sleep still got a nice view of the rods if they start going off we'll hear them we're gonna use our fancy remote turn the lights off and we're gonna go to sleep for a little bit well i've got to say i was completely wrong about how last night was gonna go it was absolutely gorgeous out here temperature spot on one of the keys that hooked up that little fan right there it's a little dewalt fan runs on a six amp hour battery that thing will run for about 20 hours straight on half speed and that just had such a nice little breeze coming through here I actually ended up sleeping in a little bit it's about 6 45 i've heard some rods getting jangled around a little bit so i think it's time we get up and check those out i tell you what it doesn't get much better than that now you can kind of see that rock bluff i was telling you about uh, first we're going to get all this cleaned up real quick just so if we have any fish on the line 
we don't end up getting slime all over everything. Shouldn't take more than a minute or two. All right, let's check some rods, see what's going on here. See if I missed any bites. We got a gar swimming the surface right there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. Pretty good sized gar. This one doesn't seem to have anything going on, which is surprising. I thought being up on the bank, it would definitely have some action last night. Nobody wanted a perch head. We had a pretty interesting scenario overnight. I had this rod and that rod kind of tied up together and there's a little stick sticking up over there that of course I didn't see when I cast out. They were both hung in it and there was actually a fish on it. So I didn't realize that till the end, which is why I wasn't filming. I thought it was just hung up. So we ended up catching that one right away and then that a second fish overnight. Those were the only two. I wouldn't be surprised if these are hung up again. Yep. To chase that one out a little bit. And we're hung up on this one too. Let's go on up and pull the anchor here. All right, so now that the anchor is loose, we'll come back here and try and chase down these rods, see what's going on back here. All right, looks like we were hung up on a tree or something there, but that ended up coming out. Well, my friends, we've been on the water way too long without having gotten in the water. It's about time to jump in, let's do it. Well, the water may be 87, but that was a good way to wake up. Well, I think it's time we set up our morning game plan here. We got our buddy King's catfishing. He's anchored up just a little bit up the way here. We're gonna go say hey to them, see what's going on, see how their morning's going fishing. We're definitely gonna fish for a couple hours, try and put a few more fish in the boat. We might anchor up in some deeper water, see if those fish are moving into the deeper spots as the sun comes up back over here. And we might try some dragging for a little bit. And then we probably got about two or three hours. We're gonna get off the water. We got about an hour drive to the main destination for the trip, which I'm still not telling you about yet. You gotta keep watching. And then we got a couple hour drive home. So let's get this thing going. We gotta cook breakfast at some point in here too. We just had a hat go overboard. I think we got it right up over here. So we're gonna go grab that real quick. All right, got it. Can't lose that green machine hat. That thing's lucky. And back to our regularly scheduled program. Um, there he is. Yeah, see that? Look at that. They're hooked up over there. Yeah. But you can go on up probably another three quarters of a mile to a mile before it starts getting like three foot. So what we're going to do is take off our weights and replace them with some dragging weights. We got some Santee Cooper rigs. These will drag along the bottom and these floats will help keep our baits up off the bottom so we're not snagging up. And we're just going to drag some baits here this morning for a little bit. Got a couple pieces of gizzard shad going on here. We'll try and mix up our baits a little bit. Planer boards are directional so we're going to grab two for one side, two for the other side. We're going to go ahead and clip on this Uncle Lou planer board here. We're gonna put these big heavy duty ones on the Hellcats and we're gonna use some smaller planer boards on the striper rods since they've got a much more sensitive tip. These were customized by Uncle Lou. Look at those. Green machine, giddy up. We got the Uncle Lou's on the back. Ready to rock and roll. Get these baits out there. Now the planer board, just as the boat moves through the water, you either, you either need current or a moving boat. And as it moves through the water, it's just gonna kick that board out to the side and it's gonna help spread the baits out away from the boat a little bit. So we're not just dragging directly behind or under the boat. And the more line you let out, the further out to the side it goes. All right, so this is what we're looking at. We got one, two, three, four planer boards out. It spreads everything out behind the boat. And then these two are straight down, kind of suspending as we go along. Got six rods in the water, six baits. Hopefully we can get some fish here pretty soon. We're all set up. Uh, looks like we just got a bump right here. Let's reel down on that and see what's going on. Yep, definitely had a hit. Rolled our planer board underwater. Got us all slimed up, but did not hook up. Let's put a new piece of bait on there and see if we can get back after. 
All right, it's that wonderful time of morning here. We're gonna get the grill fired up and we got some breakfast to make. So we're gonna get that pan heating up. We got a little bit of cooking oil here. Plop that in, let that get good and hot. We got a couple pieces of sausage going in there. Looks like we got five sausages and two eggs to go with it. So once that gets going, we'll toss those eggs on there and cook them up. And I'm sure her rod's gonna go down right when we're in the thick of it. They're already fully cooked, so brown them up, serve them, and get the eggs cooking. And it's time to eat. Still looking for our first fish of the morning here, but what a pretty view. It's already getting up there and it's only eight o'clock so far. All right, let's get some eggs going here. Probably gonna scramble these eggs up. Sausage are just about done. These eggs are gonna cook pretty fast. This pan's nice and hot on this propane stove here. Time to pull the sausage off. Those are looking good. Eggs shouldn't be too far behind. They're just about done. Get them cooking in that sausage grease a little bit. I think we're gonna cut the heat here. This will probably be the last meal I cook on this trip, so I'm gonna start disassembling the grill. All right, time to get those eggs out of the pan. Those are looking really nice. They're browned up a little bit from the sausage grease. There we go. All right, as that pan cools down, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop these sausage up real quick. I'll probably just split them in halves or thirds or quarters or something like that, whatever. Get them all chopped up because I'm sure a rod's about to go down as soon as I start trying to enjoy this breakfast. All right, that'll do it. And let's dig in. We got sausage, egg, and some sparkling water for breakfast. Slept out on the lake, eating out here. Doesn't get much better than that. Oh yeah, now that is good. I could live out here. So we just had a pretty good takedown on this rod over here. Let's reel them in, see if there's anything on there. It sure looked like a fish. Hard to tell pulling that planer board in right now. Betcha we do have a fish on this, guys. This will be our first catfish of the morning, hopefully. Suck that right underwater. Yeah, there we go. It's not a bad sized fish at all. Now he's going to be tangled up like crazy in all of our lines. But we'll be able to sort that out no problem. Look at that little fatty. That's a good sized fish. Check that out, guys. Good looking little catfish there. He's a little bit bigger than I'd like to fillet up, but if we catch one a little bit smaller than that, we'll keep him in the live well and see if we can have him for lunch. Let's let this guy go. I don't know how long he's been along for the ride back there. Later, buddy. He out of here. He was looking for that white perch headpiece, it looks like. Let's definitely get that back out there. I might take the opportunity to change out my sinker here. This one's a little bit heavy to be an outside planer board. It's kind of gravitating towards the center of the back of the boat, so we're just gonna pop this off, put something lighter on. That's like a six ouncer. We're gonna go down to like a two or three ouncer. rod right here see if he's still on there he's not he got off we're probably gonna run down the lake a little bit here got snagged on one of our rods it was the rod sitting right here planer board popped off and I just set everything up for the drift so I didn't really want to pull everything in and re go and reset everything up so I jumped in the water, grabbed the planer board. This rod went down over here, came back in, reeled that on. I reeled that fish in, got him in the live well. I'll show him to you. That's our buddy right there hanging out in the corner. He's probably about a five to seven pound fish. Looking pretty good. So in the midst of all that chaos, we forgot to press record on the GoPro. So miss that. It's already a little bit after 10, about quarter after 10 in the morning. It's starting to get really hot. I got a couple hours of driving to do today. So we're gonna be pulling off the water here pretty soon. Gotta decide if we're gonna cook that cat up or let him go. Haven't decided yet. He could be a good early lunch. All right guys, time to end the fishing adventure and move on to the most important part of this whole video. Let's get these rods in. Let's get back to the boat ramp. We got to unpack this whole boat, 
and then we'll see what's going on after that. Right, so after a couple minutes of thinking, this guy is going to go back in the water. He looks like he just got done with the spawn, so that is a breeding fish. We'll keep him in the water. He's gone. Pulled the drain plug in the live well. It's all flowing out the back of the boat, filling up my bait cooler. Took the leftover bait, threw it in there, take it home. Both on the trailer, everything's unpacked out of the boat into the back of the truck. Time to rock and roll. All right, we on the road. Got a couple cold drinks with me here. Should be there in about an hour. All right, guys, we finally got the boat in our resting place here. Drove her about an hour up the road. We're gonna go from a bimini top like this over to a full enclosure, all custom, bent right to the boat. It's gonna attach real nice, gonna make this winter real comfortable. We're getting this done at Ron's Custom Boat Enclosures. If you're interested in something like that, come on down to the Kerr Lake area and uh, check him out. He does some nice work. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited for that project to get underway, and I'm very happy I don't have to do any of the building myself. Just have to go back down, pick it up in a couple weeks, and. We're going to be rocking and rolling really through the tail end of the summer, into the fall and all winter. I'm probably going to use this cover all year round. Get out of the sun and then heat it up in the winter. Make sure we're nice and toasty. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along on that adventure. It's been a good time. If you like seeing videos like this, let me know down in the comments. Just because this video is over doesn't mean the fun has to stop here. Check out these videos down below. Catch you some more goobers while you wait for our next video to drop. Later.